reducing fractions to lowest terms. And we are given two fractions on this sheet of paper. One is 75 over 100 and the other one is 80 over 100. Now, what does reducing fractions to lowest term means? Well, I'm Anil Kumar and I tried to research a bit and I found two things about these reducing fractions. One was that reducing means you have to divide somehow so that you can write the fraction in lower values. These numbers, for example, 75 and 100, if you can reduce these numbers, which you can do only by dividing. So, so there are two things which I figured out. One was to divide, right? One was to divide to reduce. Because if, we, if you divide a number, you get a lower number. So that part is divide the numbers so that you get lower numbers. And of course, if you divide numerator by some number, you have to divide denominator also by the same number, right? So you have to divide both numerator, right? So let me write numerator in short form as nr and denominator as dr, okay? So divide both numerator and denominator by the same number. In that way, you can reduce a fraction. So you basically get equivalent fraction, okay? So that's one part I learned and second was what is lowest terms? Now lowest terms means that you cannot divide further. That means in another way, that means the, the only common factor is between numerator and denominator, common factor between numerator and denominator is just one. So no other factor is common. So if you get fulfill these two things, you actually reduce fractions to lowest terms, correct? Now, since I've written all this on the right side, 80 over 100 is a problem, which, which is for you, right? So, so one problem I've solved myself, that is giving it to you, right? Now, let me do the problem A part. So let me divide this page further so that I leave this portion for you, right? Now, 75 over 100. Divide both sides by the same number and uh, keep on doing it till there is no common factor. So that is one way of doing it. So let's do this way, right? That is, we have 75 over 100, right? Now, some of you may need a calculator. You can take one. Both end with 5 and 0. That means you can divide them both by 5, right? So, so 75, you can divide by 5. And 100 also you can divide by 5. In that case, what do you get? Well, you get 75 divided by 5. 5 goes one time, 25. That means you get 15. And here, 5 goes two times, so you get 20. Now you get 15 over 20. They can further be divided by 5, right? So let's again divide by 5, both numerator and denominator. So in that case, what do you get? Let me write it here now. So 15 divided by 5 is 3. Okay, 20 divided by 5 is 4. So we get 3 out of 4. Good. Now can I divide them further? No, no. There is no common factor. Now we come to this definition. The common factor between 3 and 4 is just, just 1, right? 4 can be written as 2 times 2. 3 is 3 times 1. There is nothing common between them apart from one. So this is the lowest term, right? So that is how you can do it. Well, I figured out that there are so many different ways to do it. One way could have been that if I write 75 over 100, let me again do it and this time in a different way, right? So we know we can write 75 as its factors, right? After all, we are looking for common factors to cancel out, right? So I can write 75, you know, quarters, correct? So there are three quarters. So we said 25 times three is 75, three quarters to make 75 and four quarters to make 100, correct? Now we know we can divide quarters, right? 25, 25, what do we get? Well, we get three over four. So 3 over 4 we get, right? So same answer. So what we can say is 75 
over 100 is 3 over 4. And we, in the process, learned two methods of reducing fractions to lowest terms, right? So one method which we learned, I'll call this as a method of repeated division, right? So I'll call that as repeated division, right? So this is one method. I don't know if this is a standard name or what, but that is how we'll call repeated division means just re just repeat the process of dividing by a number which you can use for both numerator and denominator, right? The key thing is you have to do the operation on both numerator and denominator. And the second method which I'll say is to factor, right? To factor and simplify, right? Let me say that, right? So these are the two ways we can definitely do uh, reducing fractions to lowest factors, right? Or I should say reducing fractions to lowest terms, right? Sometimes we also call this as simplify fractions. So, so in the whole process, what we did was we wrote 75 over 100 as as equals to 3 over 4, right? That's a much simpler term than 75 over 100, right? Now, meaning you understand 3 out of 4 really means what? It really means that if we have uh, some, some bar, let us select this, right, a rectangle. And if I divide this rectangle into 4 equal parts, right, 4 equal parts, then 75 over 100 is equal to 3 out of 4. That means we take away 3 parts, right? So that is that is what it means, correct? So let me shade it like this now. So these are different ways in which you can see the same fraction. So these are also equivalent fractions. So when you reduce a fraction to lowest term, you're basically doing one process and that is also called simplification of fractions. So you can say this as simplify fractions, right? So if the question is, instead of saying reducing fractions to lowest term, simplify fractions, okay, in that case, you have to do the same process. So simplify fractions and reducing fractions to lowest terms is kind of same thing, okay? So let's recap. So what we have learned here, that when we say reducing fractions or simplify fractions to lowest terms, it really means that we have to divide numerator and denominator by their common factors until we get to a stage that the common factor between them is just one, correct? So that is what it is. I hope you appreciate it. So we'll have a lot of practice problems. I'll do one of them and the other one you do. I like this method of working and I hope you'll enjoy it with me. Thank you.